the last loose piece of rosewood on this side. Here and here, clicking. I want to make sure. And this should be the last loose piece on this long side. I'll be looking at the piano action more closely in a moment, but what I want to draw attention to is just um, the outrageous filth of the action. This is just a hundred years, 150 years of drifted in dust and, to my guess, coal dust for the most part. And it has to be cleaned up before any repairs, any reconditioning could really even start. And so I couldn't think of a better way to uh, get across the idea just how deep the dirt goes and therefore how thorough the cleaning has to be than to... Get a look at it fresh out of the piano. The action doesn't consist of just the, the keys and the hammers. There's also the damping mechanism. And this is the damping mechanism out of the 33B. Again, I just want to document original condition. Uh, it's pretty grody, as the phrase goes, I think. But I'll move in here and try and take a closer look at what piano filth means. What you can see here is the rest rail for the damper levers, which are back there, and all the accumulated gunk. The phenomenon that only time and repetition can create are these little matted dirt spots. And what they are is felt from the hammers that has filtered down in the form of you know, dust that circle gets underneath the dampers and the damper keeps them down, down, down and uh, felt a little bit of it in place. Interesting to note that the hinges on this, later models these are like braided cotton strapping 
but these are actually buckskin. The damper system I think, consists of a kind of an X pattern of strapping that makes a pretty neat hinge and pretty durable over the years. Here are the damper lifters and oh that's in nice shape and just dirty dirty dirty. I'm going to uh, clean this piece in a moment just for the dramatic effect. And back here we have the dampers and these are the original dampers. Let's see if I can't move in a little closer and let this thing refocus. But they're quite interesting in that the flats are single piece flats with a nip cut out of them in order to accommodate the wire of the next note over. And uh, these are the wedges for the base dampers and the long wires. Odd to note that they are that the uh, the bicord wedges seem to be of a, a, well, they're a different color than the rest of them. They could be later replacements or something about that batch of felt aids a little different than the rest. A curiosity. One of them is missing, unfortunately, so I'll be looking at the other old chickerings to replace these felts if I can. These are going to be cleaned and reused, by the way, as best I can. There's a few damaged beyond repair, so that's what I'm hoping that the other scale 19 might be able to help me with anyway. a little tide in warm water and start to get an idea of how bad the buildup is okay. under the black comes the brown so, which I think is tobacco <laughs> I really want to know the truth so
kind of a slow process, but it eventually starts. Becoming cleaner, yeah, it's a little better. And you don't try and go too crazy. I'll let that dry for a moment. And you can just, see, there's the original. But it wasn't dirty. So. I let that piece dry for a little bit. So you can see the actual color of the wood. And that's as opposed to where it started. And is that not some change so anyway on the underside you can see here's where the wood was not exposed to oxygen or very little here's where it had free exposure to oxygen and, uh, this is a finely sanded surface it's never had a finish on it But I will do a bit more thorough cleaning on the whole thing. But I wanted you to, since the cleaning's gonna, cleaning takes days to clean all those parts. And I didn't want to wait that long to show you how dramatic the cleaning is. So here we have it. So much nicer to handle once this is taken care of. thing to note about this settled residue you know when you clean it off something seems to gas off and go into the air um, it might just be you know stuff riding along with a bit of steam but oh it just smells of old smoke and cigars and it's just nasty and I think it is uh, probably also a bit uh, allergenic. So this is really part of making it acceptable for a living home. Take a quick look at the action from one end to the other. Start with the front rail punchings and the ivory fronts. Um, everything I'm seeing here looks quite original from one end to the other. Those are the original thin red felt punchings and I imagine I'm going to try and preserve those for sure. Um, the ivory fronts are, as you can see, uniformly checked. And some of them are moving about a bit. They'll have to be re-adhered, but they're ivory. They're original. They're there. So they will be preserved. Up above... The ivories and the ivory tops themselves are really 
quite nice. Um, they show wear in the middle. It's slight, but noticeable. And that green piece of tape covers a chip that I am quite despondent over. And I will make some repairs before I show it to anybody. At the moment, it's just covered up so that I don't make it worse or cut myself on it. So, these are the ivories and the original ebonies. The next point of inspection would be the balance rail mortises. And they look uniformly worn and dirty. Let's see if I can't zoom in here a little bit on them. Let's see if this thing will refocus. They do have felt. They are not leather and they are not bare wooden mortises, which was not unheard of at some points. So, these look pretty good. Probably just need replacement of that worn felt. And they're pretty much all the same from one end to the other. do hope this comes out. These are the, uh, the chickering labels. From this period, you'll find a label on the inside of the action here and on the inside of the case, just the other side of the, right about the same spot inside the piano, but on the case wall. Um, this one comes from the, the action factory. It has a number on it, which is the piano's production number and the signature of a Mr. Santamont. And I don't know if you can see it, but little notation of 67. So that's the year of production. Uh, the other thing to note is the uh, nice string repair on the let off arm, for which I am grateful because I can fix what's there. I can take that apart and I can fix it and put those parts back. Whereas if someone had... Uh, glued some popsicle sticks together and put something together, I'd be sore pressed. So anyway, that is the only bad part in all of these let offs. So this section just needs cleaning and uh, possibly freeing up, but uh, those are all just uh, procedurals. So this is all looking pretty good. Okay, glue, glue, glue over there. Actually starting to put it back together. And here we're still taking it apart. And we finally can get these screws out of here that were underneath that cap. There was a half inch cherry cap on top of this. These screws were under there, and of course, we could not get them off. So, this is part of the front stretcher here the lock hole and this and that. And now we got to get this out of here. And here's some crushed cells right here. These little dam up here that squeezed against the pin lock and actually caused this to be curved up like this right there. Hmm. So we're going to uh, remove this. We're going to unglue all of this here so I can lay it out on a bench. The next part that needs inspection are these 
hammer shanks and flanges and with the exception of one hammer everything in this section is original and is pretty much damage free this particular shank here the one with the odd colored hammer on it is a little chewed up at the end I may have to replace that shank but all in all it's in really well preserved condition the rest cushion is seems to be moth free which is quite amazing making me wonder what did they put in the felt in this piano since I don't see a whole lot of moth activity Mm. Of course, they weren't free with their heavy metals back then at all, so nothing to worry about. And here we see the back side of the action. You can see that they have a uh, kind of a triangular shaped lifting tab. And we're missing one. These ones over here are about four millimeters thick. Uh, the ones in the base section right over there are two millimeters thick for some curious reason. But I will look into whether I can preserve these or whether they're too hammered out. Um, Clocks that get pounded often can't be saved in that the felting process sort of never stops happening and once felted deeper they can't be untangled and unfelted so I will probably have to replace a lot of the contact felts and leathers with fresh material but it's available Now's a good time to go after these. These are broken or split there. That's easy. One little clamp there. One clamp there. And there. And we 
have some veneer over here. Split here. It's not loose. Just, just this corner. So that'll be, might be tricky to clamp. Need a big clamp. We'll set that up next. 